Hi, this is Bill. So on this demo, I'll be showing you how to uh, create both inbound and outbound integration in ServiceNow. So at the moment, um, I created this um, application in ServiceNow. And, and uh, to be able to do this, you need to basically go to Studio. And um, after you go to Studio, Right, so it will take you to this wizard, right? So um, make sure you have um, created this wizard, right? I mean, you have followed the wizard, right? And after following the wizard, um, you could open the uh, studio. So this is what we've created. Uh, the app, I named it um, REST API example, right? So upon creating that, right? So um, I created uh, a few objects, right? So I started by creating um, a REST message, right? So by creating a REST message, right? So all you need to do is type in REST, right? And I started with the um, the outbound integration, right? So by choosing that, it will take you to this form, right? And uh, this form, I name it employee integration. So I copied this um, URI, right? And created um, two connections, right? or two APIs that connects or, or basically integrates with uh, a dummy API, right? So before you go there, um, I created um, get all employees and get employee, right? So it's coming from this, from this URL here. So in this example, you will see um, a JSON return, right? And, and um, as you basically see, um, this one has a parameter and this one is getting all employees, right? Now, as I go back to the studio, right? So uh, for example, this one, I'm gonna get employee, right? Upon getting the employee, uh, as you saw the URL earlier, it needed a parameter, right? So I created this um, uh, parameter, right? With um, HTTP method get, right? Eventually there's no authentication at this stage. And automatically upon generating variables, Right, so I create a test value of one, right? As you test it, right, with the employee number matching uh, this variable here, I will call the URI, right? So after doing that, it will return, it will return this um, JSON object, right? As you can see, it will have a status of success, right? And it will have a child object data. And we took the employee name, right? Um, eventually, we are, we we're planning to get the employee name, which is um Tiger Nixon, right? So after making that successful, right, I created a um a business rule. Well, before moving to the business rule, right, uh, this code, right, get employee, right, what service now can do for you, is uh you could um create or he has pre-created um scripts already on integrating. Right, but this is not production code. It's just give you a template, um, same same as I did. Um, it's not production code, but it's a template that helps you um integrate. So it gives you the um the parameters already and the objects necessary to do uh, the scripting on the REST message. Now, um, after doing that, I created this business rule, as you can see on the top. So uh, I'm gonna get the employee name. Um, and on the table incident, right? So I'll use the advanced mode when to run it, right? This um, I made sure it's asynchronous because this is basically based on the behavior of the third party um, integration. Asynchronously, while it waits for the server, right, to come, to come back with the data, right? So it gives a chance for any delays, right? And of course, I only applied it when incident is true, if it's active and I went to the advanced, right? So if we're going to the advanced, you will see my script here, right? So automatically, right, uh, the script um, generator that I showed you earlier generates this um, line of code. So it calls the um, the application, right? So this is the um, uh, the app that we've created. So it will be named after your instance, right? And you will see the name of the um, uh, outbound REST and the integration that we did, which is get employee. So if I go back, get employee. So you see that it's get employee there. 
So so ServiceNow intelligently captures that. Right. So from there, um, as you can see, it's objects, right? So statically right now in this example. So I only um, used um, employee number one, which is Tiger Nixon, and it will come back with a response. So as you can see, I got the body, the response body. At the same time, I would like to get the HTTP status, right? So if it's um, successful or not. So after, um, you see, I'm basically debugging. Uh, well, that's what I'm doing now. And the body, I'm passing it to a JSON object. Right. So after pausing it, right, so you will see here, I'm trying to debug again. I would like to see if there's anything which has been returned, which is the data, which I showed you the um, hierarchy earlier. So since I like to get the employee name, I'm making sure that I got the employee name while debugging. And I'd like to get the status. So I've, I've made some verification, right? So if it's um, successful, it's giving returning success, then write down the name and the short description, right? So I took the object, right? So you can see here the data and the employee name, right? Then updated, then if it's, um, if something goes wrong, then I will be basically um, logging it or if it has an error, right? Then I'll be logging an error, right? So upon testing that, right? So you will see here successfully, uh, I have updated the, the um, short description by its name. But prior to that, I was I was debugging, right? So I'll show you the debug. Right. So as I go to the debug here. So there's just like some a little bit of slowness on on the um instance. So upon entering, so I, I made sure you can, uh, from our previous example it's easy to find. So get employee record, you'll see it here. Right. So you will see that there is some unexpected behavior, right? So you can see the time here. So i only done it for a few minutes, but um, the behavior is sometimes returns four to nine. So so there's some few techniques to make the code reliable, but I did not apply it here. This is only a sample code, but you will see here um, what we're trying to achieve, right? So for example, on the fault line, right? So the response status is success. Then you get the um, HTTP status code it's 200. And when it was 200, it has returned the name successfully, which is um, Tiger Nixon, right? So so from there, we have successfully provided you the, the outbound. Now I'll be showing you the, um, the inbound, right? <clears throat> so, so the inbound, uh, we need to like um, understand Right, the sys ID. We need to get the sys ID, right, for this number. So, so let's grab that um, before going forward to the. So let's go to incident not list to make our life easier. Dot list, right, and get the number, the sys ID number. I mean, so um, let's do that and get the sys ID. Copy sys ID. Right now, let's go to REST Explorer. So upon going to REST Explorer, let's uh, find the, uh, there you go, REST API Explorer. And from here, we could um, verify that what we have done is successful. So let's do it that way. So this is inbound, right? So meaning, um, this is when we share data outside of ServiceNow, right? So, so basically, um, we need to have like an authentication. So I did not show it here. So you can create um, a username and a role, and we have a role of um, REST um, that where they could access um, the tape the the um, API itself. So that will be their means of authentication. And you could be more granular um, on, on the rights, on basically um, on, on sending the rights, basically, or providing the rights is um, it could be more granular using ACL, right? So on this example, you will see that upon providing the sys ID, 
right? So this is the URL that will be shared with the um, credentials that I mentioned, username and role, right? And as we scroll down, it will provide the results. So let's see, Tiger Nixon. So you can see here that successfully has verified that we managed to get the integration successful from an outbound now going to an inbound message. I hope I managed to help you and give you an understanding how integration works in ServiceNow. Um, I, I hope to see you um, on my next video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe.